The goal in this video is to finish what we started in the last video, which is the creation flow. The next step is we'd like to be able to add a save icon in the top right as part of the action bar. And when you tap that, that is what will trigger collecting all the data for this map, this user map data class, and passing it back to the parent activity, which is the main activity. So first, let's start with adding an icon into the action bar. The way we'll do that is through an Android system called Menus. The first thing we'll want to do is add a new resource directory, which will contain all of our menus. And now we want to create a new menu resource file called menu create map. And we'll fill that in shortly. But first, let's reference that new menu file that we created. The way we'll do that is start typing on create options menu. And here we need to get the menu inflator and then call inflate, pass in the menu resource file that we just defined and pass in the menu, which is a parameter to onCreate Options menu. We're going to define various actions in the menu. When one of those is tapped, we want to get notified in the create map activity. The way that works is by overriding method on options item selected. And here we want to check if the item selected is the save icon. Okay, let's go back into menu create map and fill this out. So here you can see that the palette of the options of, of what we can drop onto the menu is much smaller, which makes sense because menus are purposefully constrained. Um, and the thing that we're going to be dragging out is a menu item. And so by default, this will create a menu item which lives inside of these three dots, um, which is called the overflow menu. So by default, everything will live inside the overflow menu. Let's give this menu option a different name. We'll call it save. And I'll give it an ID of MI save. That stands for menu item save. We don't want the menu option to live inside of these three dots where the user has to tap on it and then tap on save. Instead, we would prefer for the action to always be a first class citizen in the action bar. And that's what show as action represents. If I expand this, you can see there's a couple different options here. Always means always show this menu item as an action, which means it should not go in the overflow menu and will always be displayed in the action bar. Never means it will always be in the overflow menu. If room means if there's enough screen real estate, only then do we want to show it as an action and promote it into a top level. Otherwise, it'll live inside the overflow menu. We want always because we always want the save option to exist. So once I say apply, then you can see that instead of the overflow menu now, because there are no other menu options, the save text shows up as part of the action bar. Instead of it being text, we'd like it to be an actual icon. So I'm going to select an icon here. I'll just search for save, tap OK, and now it shows up as an icon. So let's go back into create map activity. Now we can compare the ID of the menu item selected with the ID of the option we just defined. So if these are equal, then we have tapped on save. And in this case, we'd like to return true because we want to stop further propagation of menu options item selected. So what we'd like to do here is create a map based on the marker data that we have, and then pass that back to the parent activity. Before we do that, again, we need to do error handling. So if the markers that we've saved so far is empty, that means the user hasn't dropped any markers onto the map, then we don't want to allow them to save the map. So we'll say if markers is empty, then we want to show a toast and say there must be at least one marker. And then we want to return early in that case. Otherwise, what we'd like is to generate a user map. And this takes in two things. First, it takes in a title. And the title, we can get it pretty easily from the intent. And 
And the second parameter is a list of places. So to generate a list of places, we're going to iterate through the list of markers, and for each marker, we're going to generate a place. There's a really nice way to do this using something called the map function. And what that does is it'll iterate through the, uh, a list, and it'll operate on each element of that list and transform it in the way you specify. So we say markers.map, and then on each marker, we're going to do a certain action. And in our case, we want to generate a place for each marker. So the place takes in a title, description, latitude, and longitude. And these all will come directly from the marker. So we'll say marker.title, and then the description will be the snippet of the marker. And then the latitude and longitude will also be coming from the marker.position, and then latitude, longitude. So the result of mapping this is we're going to transform the list of markers now to a list of places. And that will be the second parameter of our user map. So we'll say val user map. And now that we've defined this user map, we need to pass it back to the parent activity. The way that works is we'll say val data is equal to new intent. And we'll pass the user map as extra data onto this intent. I'm going to utilize the extra string that we've defined from main activity, which is extra user map, and then pass in the user map here. And finally, we'll say set result with activity result OK, and pass in the data here. And then call finish. So when we say finish, what we're telling Android to finish this activity, which means the create map activity, and go back to the parent activity. And we're going back to the parent activity with result OK and with the data, uh, which contains user map in it. So once this happens, we should then come back into on activity result. And let's see if we're able to actually get into here. So we'll put a log statement. And I'll say on activity result with new map. And we need to get the user map out of the data. So I'll say user map is equal to data, get serializable extra, and extra user map. So here, we are looking at the data and getting serializable data out of it using this string, which we defined already. And this is of type serializable. The Android system doesn't know anything beyond that. It's just kind of a binary blob. And we're casting it here as a user map. And this is what we're actually going to be able to modify and deal with. So we'll say user map dot title. OK, let's try it. So I'm going to create a new map by tapping on the floating action button. I'll say hello, hello, and save. Let's see if we got anything inside of main activity. OK, yes, we do see on activity result with new map title, new map name. And new map name is actually the hard-coded value that we've passed in up here, which we're going to change later. But this is proof that when we tap on the save icon, we are able to successfully get into here. And because the markers is not empty, we're able to keep proceeding, we generate a user map, and then we call finish, which then goes into on activity result from main activity. So once we get the data back in main activity, we want to modify the data that's used to render the recycler view. So in order to do that, we need to be able to reference the user maps and the adapter. So I'm going to do some surgery on this, and I'll say private latent var user maps. And there's going to be a list of user map. And then similarly for the map adapter, it needs to be its own variable here. Map adapter. Okay, so now user maps and map adapter are 
member variables of the class and we can reference them in any method. So first thing we'll do is add the user map that we have to the to the list of user maps. In order to do that, we need to make user maps a mutable list. And that means that here we actually generate sample data currently is returning back an immutable list of user maps. So first we need to cast it or we need to change it into a mutable list, to mutable list. And now we should be able to call dot add on this. So we'll say user map. And finally, we need to notify the adapter that something has changed in the data. We'll say map adapter dot notify item inserted. And the position will be user maps dot size minus one. The last position is what we just inserted. So let's, let's try this. If we run it, we'll do the same experiment as what we did before. But now when we come back, we should see another entry at the bottom. And the title of it will be what we've already hard coded, which is new map name. Let's see. I'll just add one arbitrary marker. And there you can see that we do see new map name. If I tap on that, we're, we only had one marker on that map, but you can see that it does show up successfully here. So let's do some quick updates. So first, when you go into the create flow, you'll see we are showing this dummy marker. Let's get rid of that. I'm gonna clean up the comments a little bit as well. So we don't want to show a marker at the initial location. And right now it's starting out at Sydney, but just to make it more relevant to where I am, let's start this out in Silicon Valley. So the coordinates of Silicon Valley are 37.4 and negative 122.2. So we can put that in. If we try that, let's see how it looks initially. So there you can see it does center in Silicon Valley, but it's super zoomed out. I'd much rather it be zoomed in quite a bit closer so you can at least make out where we're looking. And in order to do that, there's another method on the camera update factory called new lat long zoom. And the second parameter here is you provide a float which indicates a zoom level. So I'm going to specify a zoom level of 10. So the zoom level is a number between 1 and 21 where one is zoomed out as much as possible, like the whole world, and 20, 21 is down at the street level, so as detailed as you can get. So 10 is right in the middle, is like in a city level, which is appropriate for if you're zooming into Silicon Valley. Let's try it. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So now you can see that we're able to see a bunch of the cities, San Jose, Palo Alto, SF, which is the heart of Silicon Valley. One more thing we should do is right now, when we create a map, we're always seeing new map name as hard-coded. Instead, we'd like to be able to allow the user to specify the title of their new map instead of having a hard-coded value here. In order to do that, we're going to do, some, we're going to do something very similar to what we've already done with create map activity, which is we're going to show an alert dialog. So I'm going to copy this method and put this in main activity. And we're going to have to tweak it a bit. So the title of the alert dialog that we'll show is going to be called map title. And we're going to have to define a new dialog for this. I'll call it dialog create map. And then have Android Studio help us to create this. And it'll be a linear layout, that's fine. And this will be a simple edit text. It'll be a single view. So I'm going to have the hint be title. And the ID can be ID title. Let's make it similar to the other one. It will be 24 SP, so it's a little bit larger to indicate that it's title. And let's also, on the linear layout, the parent, let's change the padding as well on the start and end, 15 DP. Okay, going back to main activity, so now we've defined this custom layout. Uh, I'll call this map form view, just because it's a form which is about creating a new map. And here, uh, we're gonna have a title like we have before, 
and the ID is the same, but there's no more description. So we can get rid of this as part of the error handling. So then we can say map must have a non-empty title. Wait, okay, so we only want to navigate to the create map activity if we've gotten here. Because at this point, we validated that the, the user has inputted a proper title. So here we can do the navigation. And then instead of the hard coded value of new map name, we actually want to pass in the title. And now all that's left is we need to call show alert dialog. And then this doesn't need any latitude longitude. So we'll just call it with no parameters. Let's try it. So now instead of navigating directly to the create map activity, we should first see a dialog. And it asks us for the title. So I'll call it my new map. And you can see that the title of the action bar does update properly to show my new map. And if I uh, indicate something like Redwood City is here. And then maybe one more for good measure. I'll say San Jose is here. And save it. So now we have this new map show up with the name that I inputted, my new map. And if I tap on it, it does properly show the two markers that I had added. Now this is pretty great. We're able to show interesting data to the user by tapping on one of these maps. And the user is actually able to create data by tapping on the floating action button. However, one of the frustrating parts of the app is that there's no way to currently persist the data. Right? So if I close the app and I open it again, you can see that that new map I had created, which had Redwood City and San Jose, is no longer there. So a user may spend a bunch of time creating a new map and expect it to be there when they come back in a day or two to the app, but now it's gone. And so the next video, we're going to implement the persistence part of our application. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see you in the next video.